All right, 4-8, we're talking specifically about isosceles and equilateral triangles today. And we're going to mainly prove the theorems about isosceles and equilateral triangles in class. So by the end of the video, we definitely should have a better idea of how to apply properties of isosceles and equilateral triangles to solve for different things like angle measures and side lengths. Okay, so isosceles triangles, we have talked about these before. <clears throat> these are triangles that have two congruent sides. So if you look at this triangle, these sides, these tick marks show that these two sides are congruent to each other. And we talked about in class the other day how since these sides are congru congruent to each other, the opposite angles, the angles opposite to the side, also have to be congruent to each other. And I want to talk firstly about some different vocabulary that go along with isosceles triangles. These, uh, these congruent sides are called the legs of an isosceles triangle. And the non-congruent side is considered the base. Base doesn't necessarily mean bottom. It just means the non-congruent side. And um, so those are the side lengths. For the angles, we have some vocab as well. These two congruent angles that touch the base are called base angles. And remember, the base angles are the congruent angles in an isosceles triangle. This third angle that is not touching the base and is not necessarily congruent, this is called the vertex. Okay, so I think that's all the, all the vocab you need to know. Also, on a side note, tri the isosceles triangles aren't always pointed up like this. You could have an, a, a triangle, isosceles triangle that is tilted. And again, this would still be considered the base, because, even though it's not, you know, on the bottom necessarily. It's called the base because it's not the congruent side. Okay, there are two theorems that go along with isosceles triangle. We're going to talk about these more in class. I would copy these down onto your cheat sheet. Isosceles triangle theorem, if I give you an isosceles triangle, that means two congruent sides, then we know that those base angles are congruent to each other. And I wouldn't even write this. I would draw this because you know me. I'm a picture person. The converse, we, we, learned, we talked about converse in Chapter 3. Converse just means flip it. So you would actually flip these two things. So if I give you a triangle where two angles are congruent, then that means that those two opposite sides are going to be congruent to each other, and we have an isosceles triangle. Okay. Um, we're gonna again, we're gonna use more of the theorems in class. But what I want to be able to make sure you know how to do is how to use isosceles triangles to solve for different angle measures. So here in this first problem, let's go ahead and let's just solve and find uh, solve for the missing angles for all missing angles. So we know. We know, okay, we know that um, the vertex angle is 22 degrees, and we know that, so because these two sides are congruent, that these angles have to be congruent. So there's a couple different ways you guys can think about this. You can say, okay, these are the same, so I'm going to call it X. And then I know because of the triangle sum theorem that all the angles add up to be 180 degrees. So I could say this angle x plus this angle x plus this vertex angle 22 equals 180 and you can solve it from there. Um, 1x plus 1x is 2x. Subtract the 22 from both sides. Um, 180. And then uh, that's 158. And then divide by 2 and you'll get 79. That's one way to think about it and I kind of like doing it this way. Uh, some other people don't like to do the equation, that's totally fine. If you think about it, these two angles are exactly the same, so other people are like, okay, just subtract it from 180 and then divide it by 2. And that's pretty much exactly what we did over here. Either way, you're going to get 79. So if you plug it in, 79 and 79, you can check your work by adding up all three angles, 79 plus 79 plus 22, and getting 180 degrees. That's one type of question I could give you. The other type of question is very, very similar. Here I'm going to give you an isosceles triangle. Notice in this problem I gave you the vertex angle. Let's say I give you a base angle and say it was 79 degrees. And again, I want you to fill in all the angles. Well, since these are, uh, these are base angles, these have to be congruent as well. So this one would have to be 79 degrees. And then all you have to do is find this missing angle. So again, you can use the triangle sum theorem, add these up. Subtract it from 180, so this would be 158. Subtract it from 180, and you'll get that the vertex angle is 22 degrees. So there's two different approaches to these problems. I either am going to give you the vertex angle like I did here, or I'm going to give you a base angle. Either way, you're, you're using the triangle sum theorem. 
which is what we learned today. Another type of question I could give you is similar, except I'm throwing in some variables, so I'm making it just a little bit harder. Let's see, to solve this problem, what I would notice is since we have a, these two sides are congruent, these two angles have to be congruent. Since they're congruent, all you have to do is set them equal to each other and solve. So if you solve for y, I think you'd get negative 2y equals negative 16, and you'd get y would equal 8. Okay, this is the last type of question. We're going to do this more in class t tomorrow. Um, these are more pro a little bit difficult, more challenging questions, excuse me, because I have two triangles. So I give you the only, only one angle, 52 degrees, and from that one angle, you can figure out what this angle over here is. Because let's start off with the, some, the triangle that you do know information about. You can't look at this whole triangle necessarily because I don't really know what this angle is yet. So that's why I'm going to look at this, start at this triangle. I'm going to say, okay, cool, it's an isosceles triangle. So that means that since this is 52 degrees, this has to be 52 degrees. And then I can use a triangle sum theorem and find out what this missing angle is. 52 plus 52 is 104. Subtract it from 180, and you'd get 76 degrees. So this angle right here is 76 degrees. And then, hmm, I'm kind of stuck. I don't know if this is the right angle, so I can't subtract this from 90 or anything. I don't know anything about that one. So, hmm, what if I look at this other, um, this other blank triangle? I know that these two angles are a linear pair. So, if this is 52 degrees, then this one's going to have to be 180 minus 52 degrees. So, I can say, hmm, let's see, what's 180 minus 52? That's 128. So this angle right here is 128. Now, if I look at this second isosceles triangle, if I redraw it, I'm going to redraw it for you guys. If I think about it, this is a this is a vertex angle. This is 128, and I know that these two angles are congruent to each other because those tick marks are the same. So that means what I would do is I would subtract 180 minus 128 and get... Uh, 52. And then these two are exactly the same, right? So that means I would have to divide it by 2 and I would get 26 degrees. If you didn't want to think about it this way, you can think of this as x and then do the triangle sum theorem. So x plus x plus 128 equals 180. Both ways you're going to get that, um, that x equals 26. Okay. Last thing we're going to talk about are equilateral triangles. Equilateral triangles. We already know that equilateral means all sides are congruent. There's a theorem for that. So we have equilateral triangle says if a triangle is equilateral, then it is equal angular. And we talked about this in class too. If all the sides are the same, then all the angles are going to be congruent to each other. Uh, the, the other one would be like if I give you an equal angular triangle, know that all the angles are the same, then all the sides are going to be congruent to each other. So those are two theorems. We also learned that equilateral or equiangular triangles, the angles are always 60 degrees because the triangle sum theorem says that the angles all have to add up to be 180, so they all have to be 60 degrees. And so these are all corollaries. These are all derived from the triangle sum theorem. So a couple quick questions that we can do. We have um, these two questions are similar but different. Notice this one is an equiangular triangle, which means since the angles are congruent, the sides are going to be congruent to each other. So this one you're solving for a side. So you're going to set them equal to each other. 5y minus 6 equals 4y plus 12. And then that's how you would solve. y would equal 18. And then if I wanted you to solve for a side, you would just plug it in, and then you're done. I want to emphasize that sides have nothing to do with 180 degrees, or 60 degrees, or any angle measure for that, ma for that matter. This one, if you notice in this picture, all the sides are congruent. This is an equilateral triangle, so all the angles are congruent to each other. Notice they're talking about an angle. Angles do have stuff to do with um, 180 degrees and 60 degrees. Angles, we deal with, with degrees. Sides, we have no degrees. So since this one, all the sides are congruent, all the angles are congruent, we know that the angles are 60 degrees. So to solve this one, you would say 2x plus 32 equals 60 degrees, and then solve from there. So that's how you set up. Those are the two different types of questions I can give you for equilateral and equiangular problems. You're either solving for uh, sides, like in this one, or angles, like in this one. And the three problems I want you to do from the book are on page... Um, sorry page 
276. And you guys are going to do numbers 4, 8, and 10. 4, 8, and 10 on page 276. And the fun fact of the video is that the uh, largest pumpkin this year weighed in at, where did it weigh in at? I have this. Oh, the, the world's largest pumpkin this year weighed in at 18, 1,872 pounds. That is one heavy pumpkin. All right, yay equilateral and isosceles triangles.